again, if you want to turn off your camera, you're more than welcome to turn off your camera. That way you're not being recorded. Um, but really we're record. The main thing that's being recorded here is the actual presentation. OK, so good evening, everybody, and welcome to Griffin Community College. My name is Noel Kelly. I'm the director of schools for Dublin and O'Leary Education Training Board. I'm delighted to be trained to be joined here tonight by our guidance counsellor, um, Audrey Ward. We also have our deputy principal, Colleen Fitzgerald Heron, and we have our current first year year head, and that's uh, Miss uh, Kinsler here, who's going to watch and help us with all the technology bits and pieces. It's great to see so many par parents in the room tonight and hopefully your sons or daughters are with you there as well because we have a lot to talk to you about this evening and you'll hear from uh, the three speakers tonight. As I said, this is being recorded, so therefore you can go back onto the website from tomorrow and re-watch re parts of it in case of something you didn't miss or something you missed and something you didn't get and you want to get it again. So. For anybody who wants to ask us questions and put questions to the school and still something that you've heard tonight or something you want more clarity on, you can use your uh, your phone now and scan this QR code. And if you scan this QR code, it will bring you to a question and answer section of our website and you can actually an ask some questions. And we will formulate the answers and put them up for the parents then uh, over the next few days. Now this QR code I will put up again at a later stage so you get another opportunity to see that again. In terms of uh, the welcome, I would just like to say thank you very much for choosing Griffin Community, Co Griffin Community College and for putting your fate in us as a school for your son or daughter. At this present moment, you will see that we are now in our fifth year, so we have first year to fifth year. And at the moment we have 300 students, but when your son or daughter join us, we will then go to over 420 students. So we're actually taking in 120 students into the first year cohort next year, which will be the biggest year group in the school. So we'll set, set them up as anything between 30 in a class or 24 in a class. We would have to wait to see what the Department of Education gives us as an allocation before we do that. You chose Griffin Community College, and we hope one of the reasons you chose us is that we are a blended learning school. So in other words, other words we take the traditional and the modern, blend them together and have very innovative uh, methods in terms of our one to one digital strategy. We use our, uh, our, our Apple iPads as well. You're going to hear more from me as we go through. But for now, I'm just going to hand you over to our deputy principal, Miss Colleen Ahern. OK, good, good evening, everybody. Um, great to see so many of you here. Um, I just want to just go through um, a few things with you just to start off, um, I suppose, um, looking at our Griffin Community Collar College pillars and looking at our our mission, our vision and our values. And I suppose um, the mission is defines kind of the purpose of the school and what we're about. And the vision is basically the journey that we want to bring your son or daughter on, where we want to be, what we want to become and our values. Um, just, you know, what it, um, I suppose for us, what we're guided by, the principles that we're guided by. So our mission is to support um, lifelong learners in achieving their potential. Um, to minimise the barriers to learning and to maximise learning opportunities for students. And Mr Kelly already spoke to you about our, our kind of a blended learning between the traditional and the digital. OK, um, our vision is that our school is um, and our a student, our school is student centred. And I suppose and this is, um, I suppose, brought about by kind of the motto that we live by every single day that students um, will learn with pride and progress with confidence. And that is, um, I suppose, the vision that goes right through everything that we do and everything that we're about. And I suppose our guiding principles are, you know, very strong pillars in our school and it's wisdom, inclusion, dignity and respect, which are really lovely and um, strong core values for our school. Um, what do we want for the students in Griffin Community College? Well, we want to support the development of happy and engaged learners who are willing to become involved, stretch themselves and enjoy their learning experience along the way. 
and I suppose we would support your child's emotions, intelligence, great well-being and growth mindset throughout um, their experience in Griffin Community College. I suppose the one thing I'd love to bring, um, I suppose, your attention to um, this evening is our very strong and very well developed transition transfer programme. So we've been developing that obviously, you know, slowly since the school has evolved and each year it's getting stronger. Um, I suppose, to a strong evaluation process and listen to student voice, parent voice, and I suppose the teaching teacher voice with the ever changing, I suppose, growth and change of the school. But I suppose, um, I suppose just give you a little bit of flavour about how much time we've invested into this is like our transition transfer programme kind of starts now with our strong core to students that have, you know, um, selected to come to Griffin to Community College and it runs right up until probably Christmas next year. And it's kind of that kind of length of a transition transfer into Griffin to Community College. And I suppose we start off with kind of general thing links with peer, um, links with the primary schools, developing the links, see where students are coming from and um, supporting students around, you know, that anxiety piece about, you know, moving to a new school, new building, lots of new change, lots of people coming from different primary schools. So we're, you know, at the moment looking at kind of a virtual school tour for the students that might be transitioning into us. But I suppose if COVID wasn't there or if things change in the, in the coming weeks, I suppose we'd, we'd love to think that we'd have like a physical school tour for our incoming um, students. But we're just at the moment not able to commit to that. Um, but like, you know, we, we have a lot of experience from this from the last two years, I suppose. And so we have an awful lot, um, you know, that we can communicate with through to online experiences and stuff like that. So be rest assured about that if anybody's nervous about coming to the school and stuff like that. Um, just we have an evidence based or an evidence based and evidence informed program called Belonging Plus, which we've adopted into um, Griffin Community College um, school context. And that's something that the students would start straight away when they start with us in late August and they'd um, work on it right through the month of September. You know, a couple of classes a week, it could be up to five or six classes a week that we focus on kind of this transition transfer programme. And just give you a little bit of an idea of what kind of modules they'd be covering then with the transition transfer would be kind of coping with change, managing change. Um, you know, new school, new expectations. What is it that we want from them? Um, so that, you know, that they can have a very positive experience with um, set, transitioning to secondary school. Um, you know, developing strong organisational skills because we're aware that, you know, the, you know, hopefully we'll have lockers, you know, um, you know, that if their current first years don't have them due to COVID restrictions. But we're hoping that they'll have lockers and um, that they'll, um, I suppose, be able to manage their iPad, manage their their um, journal and their timetable for the week. So we'll be actually explicitly teaching and supporting students to develop these um, skills, kind of finding the way around the school and the who's who. So introducing them to the year head, their deputy principal, their principal, their tutors in the school, which we'll talk a little bit about in a few minutes. Um, improving learning and homework study. Behaviours for learning is another module that we look at, you know, the behaviours that you need in order to um, be really engaged in learning. So it's learning. So I suppose looking at listening skills and stuff like that. Um, we focus a lot around developing new friendships and forming kind of new um, positive relationships with people in the school. Um, another one might be being healthy and safe in school and looking at all their new subjects and their new thinking skills. So giving them like little textbook tours around, um, I suppose, the use of the textbooks on the iPad and all that iPad support around, you know, accessing their their VSware, which is like, you know, where they find their timetable and all that and the support will be put in very much so by Miss Kinsler around that about digital strategy and digital support for the students so be rest assured that we have a lot of work put in there we'll also have ne the next point there on the slide will be first year activity and fun day hoping to organize some nice events to get the students mixing because we're very aware that they're coming from lots of different primary schools so um, loads of opportunities to interact and engage and you know meet new people in their class we will be um, holding kind of um, standardised testing, kind of similar to the primary school around what they would have done around, I suppose, something similar to the drum chondras. We do kind of, you know, age appropriate standardised tests in um, secondary school and we'll do them kind of in late September. Um, and then SEN support, like our um, SEN coordinator will be um, contacting primary schools and parents 
and making sure that um, support is there for students with additional needs that might need a little bit of extra support when transitioning into secondary school because it is a very um, um, difficult time. OK, um, just on the next thing, really, this support structures in Griffin Community College, I suppose be, students will be supported by key members of staff within the school community. But the big one there is we operate um, a class um, tutor system. So each of the first year classes will have a tutor assigned to them that they'll become very uh, familiar with, that will support them with their transition into secondary school, but will also be there for them to link with parents, link with them and link with um, subject teachers on their behalf, you know, to make sure that they're getting on OK in school. The tutors then will be looked after and supported by a year head. And um, so there'll be a lot of support there for um, the incoming first years coming to school. You've met uh, Miss Ward here and she'll be talking to you in just a couple of minutes. She's our school guidance counsellor. So that's a great resource that we have available to um, our students coming in. We have student council, which um, I suppose our students are represented and they have a very strong voice within the school. And the first years will, of course, be supported by members of the student council. But in time as well, they will have the opportunity to, to be represented on the student council in the school. We have a lovely, strong SNA team and um, a set team in the school, which is your special education teacher team. And one of our, our two main models of support there would be around co-teaching and a withdrawal models, very small groups. So just depending on need and um, that, that, that would determine the support that a student might get. We have a very strong student and well-developed uh, student support team, um, you know, that uh, look after kind of, I suppose, the pastoral care for our students well-being within the school and look after our students um, and, you know, um, keep keep strong communication with parents. We have an EAL team that supports all of our students that come in that might have English as an additional language, so don't have any concerns there. And I suppose a really important part is we have designated liaison and deputy designated liaison um, persons assigned in our school, generally the principal and the deputy principal, which look after kind of all our child protection issues. So there's very strong support within Griffin Community College. Um, communication, uh, I suppose, it's another thing that we just find, you know, a real core value within our school is strong communication with, I suppose, with, with our parents. And I suppose our main mode of communication would be through the school journal. Um, I suppose with the school journal, I love to see it as a little bit, a bit, a little bit like a passport for school that they have to have it with them every day. Um, but it's a really strong communication to the teachers or your tutor or the year head can communicate via notes home. And we welcome notes then via the journal as well for from parents back into school, you know, around appointment or any difficulties that might be have or it could be just popping in a note saying I'd love to have a chat with you can can you give me a ring when you get a chance and um, we also have the school info um at Griffin um each teacher does have an email and kind of your year heads and stuff like that but if you're unsure that info at Griffin if you have any queries or you want to contact somebody we are we welcome um I suppose um, phone calls also and um, there is a strong communication for parents through the VSWARE system where the parents will be able to monitor the attendance of their son or daughter and also look at um, I suppose progress reports um, as they come out um, during the year and um, I think that's kind of it there. Um, just the structure of our school day, I think this is, you know, every school is so different and we just want to give you a little bit of a flavour and an insight into kind of um, what our school day looks like. Now, we start very early. We start at eight minutes past eight, but it really works for our students in Griffin Community College. Um, I suppose um, traffic and everything in the Lucan area can be problematic from time to time, but this time really suits our students. Um, and they're in and they're in on time and, you know, we're, we're very proud of them and we're delighted with them. So our school day runs Monday to Thursday from 8.08 in the morning and, and they finish at quarter to three, um, 14.45 in the afternoon. And from 8.08 until 8.20 in the morning, I know it just sounds very short, like that 12 minutes, but they get an opportunity to meet their tutor every single morning and check in with them. And the tutor checks in with them, make sure they're organised for their day 
and passes out kind of key information and valuable information um, to students as well. Um, really important that it said that our start time is 8.08, finish the course three and that's Monday th- to Thursday and then we, on Friday it's an 8.08 start and we're finished at 5 to 1. So it's a half day on a Friday. So it's 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 nice. The students do, they really enjoy it. Um, looking forward to meeting a lot of you. I'm going to pass you over now to Miss Ward, which is going to carry you through another bit of information there. Okay, um, I'm just making sure I can move on here. Um, yeah, so hi everyone. Um, like Colleen and Noel both said, it's so lovely to see so many of you here. Um, so my name is Miss Ward and I am the School Guidance Counselor and I'm just going to go through the next couple of slides here. Um, so just looking at school life, um, you know, we do have lots of different opportunities and extracurricular activities that go on in the school. And obviously now with COVID restrictions easing more and more as time goes on, which is amazing, we're seeing lots of these kind of clubs and activities come back on. And, you know, you'll probably see next year and the year after that more and more activities will happen. And we really encourage our students to let us know as well if they have any suggestions or any ideas of, of activities or sports. Um, that they would like to be involved in, you know, and we work with them to get those set up wherever possible. So you can see there from the list, the likes of the music club, and um, we got a choir going this year, which has been amazing. And um, there's art club, sports clubs like basketball, football, athletics, and, um, you know, and there's plenty of like matches and competitions going on there with the sports, which is brilliant. So the chance to, you know, visit other schools and, and get involved in those competitions and um, we have our games club and um, chess has been hugely popular this year with with all year groups. Um, Mr. Ward down there in that room has been, you know, hounded, uh, which is brilliant to see. And um, Colleen already mentioned student council there. So, yeah, students can get involved in that. There's typically a representative for each class group. And um, we have our digital leaders um, who would work really well with Miss Kinsella um, in supporting students um, in using their iPad and accessing their ebooks. And um, the Green School Committee, the Photography Club, and um, lots of different things there. And um, throughout the year as well, we do have lots of different like themed events or themed weeks um, that happen. So this week, you know, we had Safer Internet Day there just on Tuesday. And kind of throughout this week, we've been putting on a lot of you know, events and workshops and we've had speakers come in with lots of different class groups about being safe online. Um, but during the year, as you can see there, we have things like Shock the Nguelga, Wellbeing Week, Maths Week, uh, College Awareness Week, Languages Week and so on. Loads of them dotted throughout the year, which is brilliant. And students really enjoy those. and They love getting involved and helping us out with those. Um, just to talk a little bit about parent and guardian support, like because I think we've talked a lot about the students there. Um, but for you guys, and I think especially for parents, if this is your first child to, to come along into post-primary school, it might feel like a bit of a daunting experience. Um, you know, and we are here to support you as well in that. So we are hoping to host um, a coffee morning or two early in the academic year. Um, and that will just be an opportunity for you to meet the key staff, like your child's tutor, your, their year head to meet with myself and, and Colleen and that in person as well, and also to meet with other parents. And um, it can be really useful to know another parent or two in your child's class if, if you ever want to check in with them or bounce ideas off them, which is brilliant. And um, throughout the year as well, we'll always promote and advertise any information evenings or webinars that we think are particularly relevant to parents. And um, so some of them would be run by ourselves in the school. Others might be from the department. And um, so, for example, like, you know, there might be something around Internet safety, like what we had this week. Um, and we promote that with you so you can log on for it. And um, other things might include, you know, supporting your child with mental health issues and um, loads of things like that dotted throughout the year. And we always will send information and put it up on the website well in advance. Um, and yeah, regular contact with home, you know, pay, our teachers are really brilliant at, you know, giving a quick phone call home whenever necessary, if something happens or they're concerned in any way, um, we'll always keep you well informed. And likewise, we'd love you guys to, to keep in contact with us as well. If there's anything ever through the journal or given a phone call or sending an email in, um, whatever way you feel is best to communicate. And um, so you're supported as well. And um, 
just moving on there, the next thing just to mention very quickly is house exams. So twice during the year um, the students will be assessed and they'll have house exams. And that then gives the teachers opportunity to give some real feedback and results up on the S-Ware to kind of monitor and track how your son and daughter are getting on in school. And um, so during this week of the house exams, they typically take, take place in November and then again in May, just before the summer holidays. And during the week of the house exams, the timetable is suspended. And that just means that there's no classes. There's no normal classes that week. And um, students just come in to do their exams. And um, they will have a little bit of study time as well, maybe in between exams. Exams are one hour in duration. So the school will still operate, will still begin at 8.08 .08 in the morning. They will still have a bit of check in with their tutors and then they'll have their morning exam, bit of study and then possibly an afternoon exam, depending on what options they're, they're taking. Um, but typically um, students uh, would finish at lunchtime during exam week. The day tends to be a little bit shorter. Um, which they really like and they really appreciate because it means they can go home and do that last bit of study, read over those notes again in, in time for the next day. Um, and obviously just to say there that students with Irish exemptions don't have to sit yeah. Irish exams. Um, just looking at the junior cycle here for the next few slides. So when your uh, son or daughter comes into us for the first three years, in post-primary school, they're going to be following the junior cycle um, program. And I suppose this program is based around these eight core principles of education there. So as you can see in the image there, they're the kind of eight main pillars or principles of the junior cycle. So things like learning to learn, um, well-being, um, you know, inclusive education, engagement, um, and participation, all of those things. And all of those principles are basically, you know, I suppose they're like the umbrella of all of the subjects and all of the courses that the students will follow. So they'll hit on all of these principles through lots of different subjects and learning experiences that they'll have over the three years. And um, so students, most students will typically study between eight and 10 subjects and um, they'll engage actively taking ownership of their learning. And that's something that we really do promote across the board with all of our students, you know, that this is their education. So we really do, you know, teach them, I suppose, how to become responsible and take ownership of that. And the school journal is, is really a key piece in that because that's where they track their homework and track, you know, when projects are due and things like that. And um, we engage with digital media. Obviously we're an iPad school. And that really does help to enhance their learning. So they have their eBooks and they have access to lots of different apps and websites that are really, really useful in a range of different subjects. And they do engage with the eight key skills. So you can see there in the image there, there are eight key skills for the junior cycle program. And just one example there is problem solving and thinking critically. And you know, that's, those skills are just so big, you know, when, as they move on through their education and when they're thinking about where they're going to go on to after it, whether it's into an apprenticeship, into a job, whether they want to travel or go on to further or higher level education, you know, problem solving and thinking critically and working as part of a team and being able to communicate, all of those skills are really, really important. So they start learning and developing those skills right from the beginning and um, in their junior cycle. And um, what will students learn? Um, so during junior cycle, a student will learn through their subjects. And um, so they'll have their eight or 10 subjects um, and through a combination of those and short courses. And um, there is an area of learning as well called well-being. And for some students, they may follow a level two learning program or an L2 LP. So this program is something that might be provided to a small number of students. And really, this depends on their educational needs. So typically it's only for a very small number of students who have significant needs and they also have other learning experiences there. And um, so, yeah, so it's kind of their, their, main, their core subjects, their option subjects, some short courses. And there's more slides coming up that get, kind of break this down a little bit more. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Um, but one of the short courses, just to give an example that, that our current first years are doing is digital media literacy. And um, so just to give an example there, and then well-being is spread over a couple of subjects. So that's coming up as well.
in a minute, so I'll keep going there. So yeah, so short courses, they were mentioned in the previous slide. So these kind of allow us as a school greater flexibility with our timetable and in the way that we can deliver the junior cycle. So you will see when, when, you're, when your child gets their timetable that they're going to have their core subjects and they'll probably have them a few times a week. And then they'll have their option subjects and they'll probably have those a few times a week as well. And um, typically our short courses maybe once a week because they're designed for 100 hours of engagement over the three years. So they generally do them for one hour a week. And this just allows them to broaden their learning experiences and um, to address something that they might be interested in that might not come up in, in the core subject or the option subjects for them. And um, yeah, it's just a different area of learning. OK, so that's the short courses. And well-being there, I mentioned in a previous slide as well. So this forms part of the, the junior cycle program over the three years as well. Um, and this is really where students learn to, to look after their own well-being and to protect their well-being and to develop skills and strategies for, you know, coping with their well-being, you know, um, and being able to, to mind themselves and recognise when maybe things aren't going so well and being able to to look for help and ask for help and, and have their own coping strategies as well. Um, and well-being is done through a combination of four kind of areas or four subjects, as you can see here. So we have CSPE, so that's our civic, social and political education. Then we have our PE or physical education, SPHE, social, personal and health education, and then through guidance as well. And um, so they'll see quite a bit of me popping around as well. Um, with guidance there. So all of these combined and also the time with their tutor and the times with their year head and their extracurricular, all of that stuff is going into their, their well-being and helping to develop their skills in that area as well. Um, just a quick note then on classroom-based assessments. Um, CBAs is what, you, is what you guys will probably hear a lot of as your, as your son or daughter are, is going through three years. So in each of their subjects, they will be um, doing classroom based assessments for CBAs. And these are typically completed in second and third year. Some subjects have one CBA, some subjects have two. And then in third year, the students will complete an assessment task and that's based on their CBA experience. And um, then the final written exams for each of their subjects, they take place in June. So at the end of the three year program, at the end of third year. And um, so I think that's it for me. I'm going to hand back over to Noel now. Yep. OK, so uh, so a lot of information covered so far there from Mr. Hearn and Miss Ward. Uh, we still have a bit to go, and this is some information that you will probably want to share with your sons and daughters now following on from this part of the presentation. The other thing is I would recommend that you are getting a lot of information tonight, so I would probably recommend that you 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 watch it again with your sons and daughters from the website just to make sure that everything is clear because there's a lot of information coming. So in terms of Griffin Community College, uh, the thing to know is that we have core subjects and the core subjects are Irish, English, maths, history, geography, science, Spanish, and we have their Spanish or German, and this is still to be cut. To, to be confirmed, but at the moment it's definitely Spanish. If we are going to offer German, we will communicate that to parents well in advance of you getting to pick your subjects. There's also philosophy and that's a short course and that was uh, already discussed. Short courses were discussed by Miss Ward and we have religious education and note there it's religious education and in Griffin Community College we do not assess um, religious communication or religious education. Then we have our well-being subjects, won't go through them again, but in terms of their names, CSP, SPHE, physical education and learning to learn. So they are well-being and over the four to three years, your son or daughter need to engage with 400 hours of well-being. And we do that by giving one to two periods and a period in graphene is 40 minutes if it's the first period in the morning or one hour if it's any other period after that. And we give uh, one period to each of those, but it is worth noting that in second year, your son or daughter will do two periods of physical education, and those two periods will help us achieve the 400 hours of well-being when this is all combined over the uh, three years. 
Now, this is very important. In Griffin Community College, on top of, I'll go back to this for a second, every student has to study these. Now, obviously, if your son or daughter has an Irish exemption, we will talk to you separately in relation to the Irish part, but everything else there that you see on this list, your son and daughter must do. They are core subjects. Then here, they must also do, because they're their well-being subjects. It's this that you have to sit down with your son and daughter and make sure that you have gone through these and that you are that your son or daughter kind of have a good conversation with you in relation to what they want to do. So what we have here is we have art, woodwork, technical graphics, business, music, coding and digital media literacy. Now, coding and digital media literacy are two subjects combined as one because they're two short courses, but they're still they still just count as one subject, although there's two in that line. And then we have home economics. So there are um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven subjects there. And your son or daughter needs to pick two of those. And when they're picking two of those, they will rank the lot of them from one to seven, one being the subject they most want to do and seven being the subject they least want to do. And that's done through a system that will allow us to uh, input that into uh, a, v a system called VSWare. And when we put it into a system called VSWare, we can then see what each of the students uh, want to do, and it will give the students their highest preference. Now, um, it's very important here to stress, and it will be on the documentation that's sent out to you as parents and guardians, that not every student gets their first and second choice. If you're lucky, you, your son or daughter might get the first and second. In some cases, nearly every child gets their first or gets their second. Nobody will get their third or fourth or as a fifth or sixth. It tries its best to system to make sure every stu single student gets at least one preference that's highest. It's also worth noting that home economics will only take 20 students in the class. So if 70 or 80 or 120 students try to get into that home economics class, the system won't allow that and will try its best to give the kids who put it as number one or number two to get that over someone who put it as number seven and so on. Now, this will be explained again to you in a document that we're going to release to you very soon. In terms of picking your subjects, please make sure you do the following. So in terms, sit down with your son or daughter and then choose the subject because it's a subject that you, you think you're going to enjoy or it's a subject that you think you're going to be good at or choose it because you're interested in it. That's what, what that's what we would say. And I'm sure our guidance counselor, Miss Ward, would uh, back me up on this when we put this presentation together. In terms, in terms of the don'ts, don't choose a subject because your friend is doing it. Don't choose a subject because you think it's going to be easy. So, for example, some students might pick art because they go, oh, it's art. What? How can it be hard? It actually could be quite difficult if you haven't got a flair for art or an interest in art and also thinking where you're going to go with it in the future. Are you going to go into leave insert art? And if you go into leave insert art, are you going to pick leave insert art and and appreciate the history that goes with that and go through art history as well. So there's a lot behind that one. OK, and finally, don't choose a subject without thinking more about it. And we are going to give you uh, a parents and guardians access to more information on our website about this before you choose your subjects. OK, so that's all about the options. When it comes to choosing the options, what's going to happen is parents are going to be sent a text and the text will bring them to a, a Microsoft Forms page. And on the Microsoft Forms page, you get to rank your subjects one, two, three, four and so on. OK, what we would say to you is, again, just sit down and take your time with it. It will open on the 2nd of March, but before the 2nd of March, you will be given lots of information about the different subjects. And on the 2nd of March, I wouldn't say rush to fill in the form because you have from the 2nd of March until midnight on the 9th of March and at midnight on the 9th of March, it closes. 
we will send you a text message again before the 9th of March to say this is about to close. Have you filled it in? If you have filled it in, don't fill it in again because it will override your first choice. So be careful. Fill it in once and once only. Um, then in terms of your contact details, just make sure when you're filling in it, filling it, filling it in that you check that your contact details are correct because it's the student's name is recorded, but the parent's name is also recorded and the details as well. So just make sure you're happy with everything. I know that you are all sent this and it's a very important timeline. So just make sure that you go through the timeline in terms of transfer and all the key dates are there and I won't read through them. But one of the key dates, for example, is tonight. And thanks to all the parents and guardians who are here this evening. I also know that we have members of our parents association here as well. So I'd like to welcome members of our parents association along. Then, as I said, the 2nd of March is a key date opening of the options. And then the next key date is the closing of options. And like a big key date will be when we come up towards the end of the academic year and you actually are told what your options are. In terms of fees, payment of fees, at this stage we haven't asked any parents for any fee, but just to let you know that there is a fee of 100 euro. That 100 euro covers an awful lot of stuff as you're coming in. And one thing that we are very proud that it covers is the cost of the insurance for your son or daughter, the accidental insurance. And myself and and I know Miss um, Kinsler will tell you that especially this year, uh, especially with bringing students to the likes of uh, outdoor activities and they're running into each other or they slip and fall at home, that insurance covers you. It's 24 hour insurance and it covers you um, for all accidents and emergencies. It also covers the journal fee. It covers the cost of some trips. It covers the cost of a locker if lockers are up and running next year. And I have to stress that. We will provide your son and daughter with a locker next year as long as it's safe to do so under COVID regulations. OK, we would ask that parents have that paid by uh, I think it's the end of March, the 28th of March. Can someone because my uh, text here has gone very small. I think it's 28th of March that's showing there. Is that correct? 20, um, 28th of February, Mr Kelly. It, it opens on the 28th of oh, February. Yeah. You're dead so, right. Yeah. Thanks. So payment of the 100 euro opens on the 28th of February and closes on the 28th of March and you will be sent a link in relation to how you can pay that. So we do not take cash in the school. It's all uh, paperless. And when you go forward into doing trips and activities with your sons and daughters, you'll see that if you're doing trips, it'll, it'll all be paper free as well. In terms of technology, um, I'm going to put Miss Kinsler on the spot. Uh, she hasn't, she doesn't, she didn't know I was going to do this. But Miss Kinsler, will you talk around the technology part, considering you are our, our uh, digital leader? No problems, Mister Kelly. Um, so what I would first say to you is, when your son or daughter comes to school, they're not to panic if they haven't used a device before. We've had many first year students this year who came in worried that they don't know where a home button is and that maybe other people will be tech savvy. We will provide a program to all first years. And what we do is we get digital leaders. So they could be anyone in fifth, fourth, third year to work with them as well. And they will upgrade and show them the skills. What we do is we start out with a simple program. We treat the iPad as something that has never been used before. Um, so in each class, the teachers, when they're doing activities, will show the student how to communicate with the device, how to use Teams, which is our platform, which we send all notes home on. They'll be able to access activities and reminders for students as well. So it works in um, comparison and along with their school journal as well. Riggle is our school provider for the iPad and with that, it provides a managed ID. And it's really, really important because child protection is utmost in our school. So be aware that the iPad will be monitored. There won't be any content being able to download on it. So they won't have access to what is an app store, if you're familiar with an iPad, to download apps. All apps on the device will just be for educational purposes only. Regal will issue a parent pack to you, which is relevant to GCC. They haven't released the store dates yet. So we will keep you informed as soon as they do with updated prices. And what they will do is they will provide a period of when you can purchase and pay for the device. Um, I'm going to hand you back to Mr. Kelly there then. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ms. Kinsler. And sorry for putting you on the spot. 
up, but you are the uh, you are our, our school specialist in terms of all things Regal. So the key thing here is that you're not going to bring your own iPad to the school. It's an iPad that is bought through the Regal store and uh, managed by Regal. Now, I do want to say, because at least it's here on the record then, that if you do buy, well, you have to, but when you get your 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 device through Regal, you then get you will be also paying a management fee to Regal, not to us. Everything goes to Regal, and that management fee will do for first year, second year, third year. But when your son and daughter go into senior cycle, there is another small management fee. But just so parents are aware of that now that you've been told that and it's not landed on you as a surprise in the future. In terms of books, we don't have hard books within the school. It's ebooks is what we use, and hence the reason, one of the reasons for using our iPads. And all school books will be available as ebooks. You're going to be able to download the books straight onto the iPads. You will be given an op option if you want to get the hard back, hard copy books, and you can keep them at home. And we will, we will also notify you, or the school will notify you when the ebook store is open, and a link will be sent or placed on our website. And I'm sure Miss Kinsel will give us a nod there and tell me that I'm all correct in around in relation to that. We're very proud to have a uniform that our students are very, you know, I suppose our students are proud of. They wear with pride. Um, we have a, a particular tracksuit that the students wear and we have a particular uniform and our students are actually involved in actually the design of the uniform and recently the students designed the change to the senior cycle jumper. It's worth noting that at this present moment in time the, the teachers of the school, some students and the parents association are currently looking at the tender process of the current uniform so the uniform will say the same but where we get the uniform from might change and might not it depends when the tender process is over as soon as the tender process is over all parents will be notified of where they can get the uniform so you can see the uniform here and um, what is what's what's expected so full uniform but it's very important to state that in terms of our uniform students but the, the boys and girls will be expected to wear shoes black polishable shoes not runners not trainers black polishable shoes it actually sets off the uniform really really well and this was a choice that was brought in by our parents and by our students the other thing to note is that students must wear the gcc jacket there's two types of jackets. We do this because we don't want students coming in with very, very expensive jackets and possibly going missing and stuff like that because they've lost them or mislaid them or whatever the case would be. So really we have a school jacket and that's the only jacket that is permitted within the school. In terms of the dates, if your son or daughter um, needs assistance through AEN, SEN, uh, where SEN department or AEN department will be in touch with parents or probably have already done so in relation to collecting any reports that are needed. I've already spoke to you in terms of subject selection, so that will come out on the 2nd of um, March and closing on the 9th of March. iPad purchase, we already spoke about that in relation to the a date will be uh, announced as soon as the Regal store opens and so too will the, uh, the book store. You'll be told about that. Every year we pride ourselves in making sure that the parents have a calendar of events for the following calendar for the following academic year. So in um, late May, early June, you will be sent a letter which will detail every single date, including the day we open, the days we have holidays, exams and so on. And you will have you'll be at the plan around that as well. Obviously, we won't have stuff like trips in it because trips change based on what subject they're attending. And you can always visit our website at any time. And when you visit our, our website, you would brought up to date with the, um, the huge amount of information that's going on. Miss Ahern mentioned earlier on that you can contact us through multiple ways. So there's our phone number, our email address there if, 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 to get through to the secretary and the secretary will pass you on to the relevant uh, person. So it's info at griffincc.ie. I would strongly advise that you would follow us on social media. You can follow us on social media at Griffin CC. You can follow us on Facebook. There's also an Instagram account. 
I don't think we're at TikTok yet, but we're on nearly everything else. Um, but our, our website is a huge source of information and this presentation will be on our website tomorrow. And I, as I said earlier on, I would watch it through with your son or daughter, especially there are people coming in now and possibly it will be worth them sitting and watching this uh, later on. OK, so as I said, www.griffeyandcc.ie and you'll see it all. I am very much aware that we have given you a huge amount of information and what we would say is that if you have questions based on what we said tonight, um, you can take a picture or use your camera now and take a picture of this or scan this QR code. And if you scan the QR code, it will bring you to a question and answer forum. And on the question and answer forum, you can ask whatever it is that you need to ask. And we will put a Q&A sheet together based on questions that have come up tonight and we will place that on our website. Just so you know, we won't go back to parents with individual because we get hundreds of these. So we won't go back to parents with individual answers because at this moment in time we're in a process. So everybody knows that the next part of this process is the options will well actually there'll be option information placed on our website. Then on the second, again, I don't want to go through, but on the second, options open, but you will be contacted through text message. With that, I'd like to thank Miss Ahern, Miss Kinsley, Miss Ward, and you, the parents and guardians, for entrusting us with the future of your son and daughter's education. And that is it from us this evening. And thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thanks, everyone.